Father, we thank you for today. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Your word says that it's not by our might, it's not by, by our strength, but it's by your spirit. So it's my prayer that your spirit enlightens us today by your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So this morning we're going to look at um, a topic, something that I've entitled Mighty Warrior, Use the Strength That Is Yours. Mighty Warrior, Use the Strength That Is Yours. Or, or Mighty Warrior, Use the Authority That Is Yours. And our lesson text is um, from Judges 6. 11 to 14, and I'm using the message version. So I read Judges 6, 11 to 14. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Josh the Abezrite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man. Oh, sorry, I'm actually reading um, New King James Version. Doesn't matter, let's go on. Um, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us? about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Verse 14 says, Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Okay, so I'm switching to the message um the verse 14 in the message says but god faced him directly go in this strength that is yours save israel from midian haven't i sent you amen okay so once we are children of god or as soon as we become part of the kingdom of god we automatically become mighty warriors God is our programmer, and he embodies us with default settings. That is why he, as soon as um, he referred to um, Gideon in, um, sorry, in, I think, the verse 12, as, oh, mighty warrior, mighty warrior. So all of us, as soon as we become part and parcel of the kingdom of God, we are mighty warriors. And I said, God is our programmer, and he embodies us with default settings. The default settings are automatically given to a program or a device. For example, we all use rice cookers, and the rice cookers have been, you know, have inbuilt um, automatic keep warm settings that come on by default. So that's an example of what I mean by default settings that we are mighty warriors by default but the term default settings can also refer to an individual's normal behavior something embedded inside of an individual and as god elect and as children of god we are automatically mighty warriors can we look at romans 8 37 it says yes in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Okay? So we are mighty warriors of God. And as a result of that, we are conquerors through him, Jesus, who loved us. Amen. So let's move on. So our Christian journey is not a walk in a park. And we are told this in John 16, verse 33. Can we just quickly have that? And put on. It says, These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world, 
you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. So John 16, 33 plainly tells us, in this world we'll be faced with numerous troubles, but in and with Jesus we have overcome the world. And as warriors, mighty warriors, we overcome the world. So I went on to look at the definition of what a warrior is. And it says that um, a person experienced in warfare. So as Christians, we are experienced in warfare. It also said that anyone who fights a good fight, as warriors of Christ, mighty warriors of Christ, we need to fight a good fight. And the last um, definition I got was a soldier who shows vigor, courage, and aggressiveness. We're going to look at these attributes individually. Okay, so the first one is vigorous. And that means strong and full of energy or having muscular strength. If we um, picture in our minds our body bodybuilders, you know, they go through, they do a lot of things to ensure that they have muscular strength. And in the same vein as Christians, as mighty warriors as well, we also have to ensure that we are muscular in strength. Can we look at um, Psalm 119 verse 25, please? It says, My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. Amen. In some scriptures, it says, it says um, in other versions, build me up according to your word. Strengthen me according to your word. So the only way we can gain muscular strength as God's warriors is that we need to make sure that we imbibe the word of God. We need to make sure that we are eating, constantly eating. You know, that should be our protein shake all the time. We need to make sure we strengthen ourselves with the word of God. It says, strengthen me according to your word. So in order to get yourself built up as a warrior, we need, you need to make sure, or we need to make sure that as warriors, we all always build ourselves up by eating God's word. And the other thing that we also need to do is to always be in constant prayer. Can we look at Jude 1 verse 20, please? But you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Spirit. So this is another way that as warriors, we are supposed to keep our strength up. This is the way as warriors that we are supposed to attain muscular strength. It says here, Beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. You need to ensure that as warriors, mighty warriors, that we pray at all times and in all occasions. Amen. The next attribute is courageous. Can we look at uh, Joshua 1 verse 9 please? Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. As a mighty warrior of Christ, there is no, need, there is no room for being a scaredy cat. There's no room for being fearful. We need to face whatever the world throws at us. Hold on. We need to be courageous as God says. He says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Amen. Can we look at Proverbs 28 verse 1? The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a liar. Church, we are supposed to be bold. As mighty warriors, we are supposed to be bold. Whatever we are dealing with, whatever the issue is, whatever the, whenever the enemy rages up against us, we need to face the enemy, our enemies, our troubles, full on. We must be bold as a lion. Can we look at Proverbs 30, verse 30, please? A lion, which is mighty among beasts and does not turn away from any, a lion which is mighty among beasts and does not turn away from any. We shouldn't run away. We shouldn't retreat. We must press on. We must be strong. 
we must be courageous as God's mighty warrior. So whether we are faced with, whatever troubles we are faced with, be it in our marriage, be it in, uh, be it in relation to health, be it in our finances, we must face those things full on. We must be bold. Use the word of God that, that we have inside of us and, you know, face those situations full on. Fight those situations as mighty warriors of Christ. Amen. So if we go back to our lesson text, we um, realize that Gideon was afraid of the Midianites. So I want us just to quickly go back there. I think uh, verse um, okay, so the verse eleven it says, "Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Dos, Dos the Abyssalites." While, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. Okay? So Gideon was afraid of the Midianites. And so he was threshing wheat at a wine press instead of threshing the wheat out in the open and on the, fresh, the threshing floor. And he did this so that the Midianites would not raid him. But God had to ensure that Gideon came to the realization of who he was in him, hence the title, Mighty Warrior. May we be cor courageous and bold, and may we face the devil and his demons and trials and tribulations full on. May we boldly do the work of God without fear. May we come to the realization that we are, by default, mighty warriors, and nothing and nobody, nor the gates of hell, can prevail over us. Amen. Let's look at the next attribute, which is aggressive. Mighty warriors are aggressive. Can we look at uh, Matthew 11, verse 12? And it says, And from the days of John the Baptist, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. I go over it again. And from the days of John the Baptist up until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Amen. Church, we need to lay hold to the kingdom of God and its benefits by force. Spurgeon uses the term holy violence. We must be intense, intense, sorry. We must be intense. We must possess earnest passion. We must strive to advance the a kingdom strive to advance the kingdom of God and to also lay hold to all the benefits associated with the kingdom. We must be violent men and women. We must be violent warriors of God. There's no room for a laid-back attitude. Spurgeon says, there are so many adversaries to oppose that if we are not violent, we shall never be able to overcome. Can we look at James 4, verse 7? Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. As warriors, mighty warriors at that, we must resist the devil. We must be violent. We must resist the devil. Can we look at James 14, sorry, Judges 14, verse 6. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, that is Samson, and he tore the lion apart as one would have torn apart a young goat, though he had nothing in his hand. But he did not tell his father or his mother what he had done. Church, the Spirit of the Lord is upon us mighty. And just as Samson tore the lion apart, as one would have torn a young goat, in the same vein, so are we supposed to tear our troubles apart. So are we supposed to tear whatever the devil throws at us apart. We need to be violent. We need to have holy 
violent. We can't be laid up, laid, laid back. We must arise. We must realize that we are mighty warriors of God's kingdom and we must face our troubles and every work of evil full on. And um, the verse 14 of that just says, we should use the strength and might that is ours. Church, we have been given authority that is ours. And we must ensure that we put that authority to use. Oh, no. Sorry, I've actually made a mistake there. Um, yes. Can we go back to the verse 14 of um, Judges 6? He says, Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Okay. And I'm switching to the message. It says, But God faced him directly. Go in this strength that is yours. Save Israel from Midian. Okay. God faced Gideon directly. He told Gideon directly, Go in this strength that is yours. We need to come to the realization that we have been given strength. That is ours, okay? It's ours for the taking. It's ours for the use. Bible says, go in this strength that is yours, okay? And then the New King James Version says, go in this might of yours, okay? It is ours. It is ours for the taking, ours to use. We have been given authority that is ours, and we must ensure that we put that authority to use. Can we look at Luke 10, 19? It says, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Okay? So Luke 10, verse 19, is actually, you know, buttressing what we've read in um, verse 14 of Judges 6. It says, But God faced him directly, Go in this strength that is yours. And Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give you the authority. So yes, the strength is ours. The authority is ours to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and over whatever faces us or faces us. We have been given authority to face those things full on. Can we finally look at Mark 16, 17 to 20, please? And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Verse 18, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. 19, so then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Okay, I think we can end it there. Okay? So all the scriptures that we've just now read have placed emphasis on the fact that we have been given authority. God just says that the authority is ours. And once again, I want to stress that we must ensure that we put it to use. I want us to go back to what I said the topic, today's topic is. And it's what? Mighty warrior. Use the strength. In other words, authority that is yours. Today, may we all come to the realization that we are mighty warriors by default. And God has given us strength that is ours. Okay? And may we as mighty warriors use that authority. In Jesus' mighty name, let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you have enlightened us today. That we are mighty warriors, O oh God, Father. And may we embody that term. May we 
live up to the fact that we are mighty warriors by default. Father, you have given us authority. Your word says we should use the strength that is ours, O oh God, Father. And it's our prayer that in our Christian journey, my Lord and my God, that whatever we encounter, whatever we do, that we would use that godly given authority to your glory. Father, may we never forget that we are mighty warriors. And may we always use the strength that is ours. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.